What's up everybody? Thank you for coming to another entrepreneur video on my second channel where I give you my business opinions and share some stories with you to help you grow your side hustle, your home business, your part-time business. So let's get started. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how to start a small business, a home business, a side hustle for beginners. Let's get started. Number one thing you need to do when you start a side hustle or want to start a side hustle is don't quit your day job, guys. No, you need the nine to five. You need that secure income because I've seen this so many times and I, I'm guilty of doing it when I first started was I had a business idea. I had some money in the bank and I risked it for the biscuit. I told myself, no, let me invest into this. Let me quit my day job, go all in into my side hustle to make it into my full-time income, and I'm gonna have millions. It doesn't work like that, guys. It takes an average three to six months just to make part-time money with your side hustle. So of course, some people could do it sooner, some people it takes longer, but just think, it's gonna take you three to six months and you have bills, I'm sure you have a family or you at least have a side chick. So you need that steady stream of income. My advice, which I've been doing, well, when I first had, when before YouTube took off, there was a strategy I did at my day job to balance it out. So I was working at AM, PM, too much good stuff, and I was working there five days a week, full time. But I was doing YouTube, you know, my side hustle, which wasn't making any money, but then, a couple months later, uh, one video took off. And I made $500 my first month onto YouTube. But I already knew, first of all, my expenses were like $1,200, so that wasn't enough. So, I couldn't quit. I didn't want to quit. Because, like I said, I know it takes a couple months to bring in more income. So, from five days at 8 p.m., I went to four days, and the extra day I put towards making more videos. And then next month I made about let's say $1,500 of YouTube ad revenue. And it was enough to quit my day job, but I didn't want to risk it. That's another thing, because hey, it might be a good month. What, what about the month after that? One thing you have to know if you haven't figured it out yet is when is your busy season and the slow season. One reason, even though I made $1,500 and my living expenses were $1,200, I didn't know when YouTube was the busy season or the slow season. So I toughed it out. But the, So I went from four days at 8 p.m. after that to only two days. And I put those extra days to making videos. Of course, I told my boss, hey, I need more days because this is what I want to do. It's my side hustle. That's another thing I highly recommend. Be honest with your job. Let them know you have a side hustle. Let them know you're trying to build it. And some bosses might not like that, but at least they know what's up. Because if they don't know what you're doing, you're keeping it in the DL, and they find out, they can terminate you because some companies don't let, don't let their employees moonlight. I think that's what you call it. Will you have another job? You know, so just double check that. But also, when you quit, it's not a surprise. Like when I went to two days, pretty much part time, he knew that I was trying to do YouTube. Of course, he probably thought I was just joking around. But then the third month, I made $3,000. I told AMPM I wasn't coming back. And I've been doing YouTube ever since. That was 2018. We're in 2022, still doing YouTube, five years running. I don't plan on quitting. I'm just, you know, figuring things out still. But don't quit your day job, guys. Don't quit your day job until you make enough. But the more money you make on your side hustle, the less days you have to work at your job. Balance it out. And you might be saying, but Reyes, my job isn't gonna let me take days off or go to part-time. Then you have to decide, homie, what do you want? You want the job or you want to make the side hustle until your full-time income? You got to make those tough decisions. The reason why I still had AM, PM, I worked at AM, PM, but was because I told myself when I started YouTube 2015, it didn't work out. I didn't make money till 2018. So for two and a half, almost three years, 
I told myself I need a dead end job that I could quit whenever that has no commitment so I could focus on my side hustle. And they did offer me a manager position, but I told them no because I knew if I took that position, I would have to commit and I couldn't call, have days off. I couldn't call off because managers, they have a big responsibility. So you have to decide what you want to do, all right? Hey, you got to break hearts. If you can't break your job's heart, how are you going to be a successful entrepreneur when you have to break hearts every day? Now, the second thing you have to do as a beginner entrepreneur is get as many clients as possible. Even if you're just breaking even, 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 I know some of you might not like this, even if you're going to lose a little bit of money, get as much experience as possible. One big mistake I see a lot of people do starting out, they want to charge high prices and they turn down a lot of customers. What you're doing is you're missing out on experience to improve your skills, to improve your business. Also, you're, you're missing out on networking opportunities because one person could bring you so many different people. And when you first start, you don't have a clientele. You don't have a customer base. You need that. But of course, this is up to you. Like for example, I always tell people when they first start, whatever you do, offer it to your friends and family at a discount. When you're first starting out, detailers, hey, tell your mom, let me wash your car. So just so you could learn. Or hey, hey family over there, let me make you, uh, let's say you have a family that's going to uh, Disneyland. Hey, let me make you matching shirts. Just cover the cost of the supplies. So that's my advice to you. Get as many clients as possible as you can. Now, another reason why you want a lot of clients is because the more clients you have, the more you're gonna figure out who's your right customer. Who do you like working with? What kind of job do they have where they're able to afford your services or products? And once you figure out who your customer is that you love dealing with, then you figure out where, where they hang out and how to target them, all right? So let me give you an example. I, I say this all the time. When I used to have a t-shirt business, I love working with sports moms because they only need one or two shirts for their, to wear for their kid. And if they have enough money for sports for their kid, they have enough money for a custom shirt. I was charging 20 to $25 a custom shirt, but because they got the logo, their name, I upsold them on some glitter, you know? Those are the customers I love. Small, quick orders with high profit margins. For, uh, for my YouTube management, where I help other entrepreneurs start and grow their YouTube uh, channels, my ideal customer is, first of all, a full-time entrepreneur. I've tried working with people who were doing it as a hobby or part-time. It's not good because they don't, have, they don't have enough work to create enough content. So, full-time entrepreneur. And secondly, I need someone who's interested on being a YouTuber. Not someone who doesn't want to be on camera. I can't work with those. I need entrepreneurs that are interested and maybe already have started a YouTube channel. But you see how I figured that out? Because I work with a lot of clients and then I figured out what I like and didn't like and what worked for me. That's what you gotta do. Another thing beginners do is they wanna start charging high when not in a bad way, and I was there too. You haven't perfected your service or product. You're not wowing people. You're mediocre, really. And I'm not trying. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm not trying to talk dookie. But what I am saying is that right now, you could improve before you start charging a lot. Improve your service or product. Get better. Get more knowledge. Like for example, if you just start a detailing business and you're doing inside and out, which is great, you can't charge a lot because people, your customers are gonna be like, hey, how come you, you didn't remove that stain? Or hey, what products are you using? Are they environment friendly? And you're gonna be like, I don't know. And they're gonna look at you like you don't know what you're talking about, you know? And of course, your work speaks for itself. If you have customers saying, wow, can't believe it, you did a great job, then you're getting somewhere. 
And another thing, you know you're doing a great job if you have repeat customers. If they keep coming back, not because of the price, but because of your skills, then you're good, all right? Here's a test, and it's gonna hurt, but you have to do it. Your next customer, let them know that you're raising your price because of inflation, the gas, whatever. If they continue to work with you, that means you're good. If they say, let me think about it. Hey, and sometimes they're not your customers. But if you have people who are really impressed with what you do, then you could start charging a high amount. Another beginner mistake entrepreneurs make when they first start, and I used to do this too, you're not making a profit. What I mean by that is, you're charging because materials cost you $15. You're charging $25. You're thinking, I'm making $10 profit. And when you first start and you're doing your own side hustle, that's perfect, don't worry about it. But when you're trying to grow a business, you have to take your time into consideration. Once again, it costs you $15 in materials, you charge $25, but it takes you two hours to complete the job that means you're only paying yourself $5 an hour. And like I said, when you first start, do what you gotta do. But after you get experience, you get confidence, you know what you're doing, then you need to know, all right, how much do I wanna get paid per hour? Like for example, now that I start recording people, I don't travel unless I'm making $200 profit, minimum, on just one day. That's including my cost of travel fees, the gas. I even put throw in food, $30 of food a day as my expense, because I'm traveling places. That's me paying my editor. And after I'm done paying all that, I take into consideration taxes. Let's say 30%. Of course, I spend a lot on my business, so it's gonna be a write-off. But I ask myself, what am I comfortable with making a day? $200 at least. There's some days I make 500 or more but $200 minimum, but that's about to go up, guys. That's why I'm creating different channels because I, the more channels I have, the faster I could grow other people's channels. And then before you know it, bro, I ain't gonna get out of bed if it's not at least a G, you know? And the last tip I have for you beginner entrepreneurs is figure out one or two marketing strategies that really work and focus on those. Because one of the mistakes I used to make was I was trying so many different marketing ideas. Some worked, some didn't work, but I was still trying. When instead, I should have focused on the top ones and put more money into it. Like for example, going back to t-shirts, uh, sports moms, they hang, they hang out in Facebook groups. So I would spend more time posting my work, tagging people, and sports moms also hang out in the fields. I volunteered to become a coach, but maybe I should have stepped it up a little bit more. You know, I should have done something different, but I should have focused on what was working instead of trying so many different things that was taking time away from me spending on those marketing ideas. Like for example, instead of going on a Saturday and socialize, which would have got me customers, I was making coupons or coming up with something else. I was going to swap me for this and that. No, figure out what's getting you some sales and put more effort into it, but still try different ideas every now and then. Sprinkle it in, but don't focus on new ideas. Focus on what's working and sprinkle in new ideas, all right? So there you guys go. Those are some tips for beginner entrepreneurs. Let me know if you have any other tips in the comments below. Hopefully this video brought you knowledge and some value. And if it did, I would really appreciate it, guys. If you gave me a thumbs up, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.